Today, we'll learn how to capture Ethernet traffic with the Hack5 Packet Squirrel on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you've ever spotted an unintended Ethernet connection and wondered what you could do with all the information coursing through those wires, today we're going to go over the Hack5 Packet Squirrel. Now, let's imagine a scenario. We have a router that we really want to learn the password to, and we have access to, a, to an Ethernet connection physically where we might be able to drop this in and cause some sort of situation where somebody might access the router. Now, if this router wasn't using HTTPS, we would be able to record all the traffic over the Ethernet and gain access to the credentials to log in and do pretty much whatever we want. Now, to take advantage of this, we'll need a Hack5 Packet Squirrel, which you'll be able to purchase in the link and also at the Nullbyte article linked in the description. We'll also need a USB flash drive that's specifically formatted with NTFS, but we'll get into that later on. Once you have a Hack5 Packet Squirrel and a flash drive, as well as an Ethernet connection you have permission to sniff, then we can begin. The payload we're going to use today on the Hack5 Packet Squirrel is one of the most simple and it requires very little configuration, which is why I like it because it's really useful and it doesn't require much to set up. Now here we can see the basic layout for the Packet Squirrel. And in order to get familiar with it, I'm first going to go ahead and connect to the device so we can see exactly what the payload is doing and you'll understand what you need to do in case you want to take on one of these more advanced payloads like the DNS spoofing or the OpenVPN. Now, I didn't want to spin up a actual server for this, so that ruled out the OpenVPN, and also DNS spoofing was being a little unreliable for me. So we're going to do the TCP dump just so we can understand how useful this is if we happen upon an unattended Ethernet connection. So first, we're going to need to set this up correctly. And what that means is we're first going to need to, from this diagram, set the switch to arming mode, which means from the USB power port, pushing it all the way to the other side so it's all the way over here. Now, once that is done, you can go ahead and plug it into power uh, via the 5 volts uh, USB power port, plug it into Ethernet in, which should go to your computer in the case of trying to configure this. And then if you actually want internet while you're doing this, you can plug this into LAN and it won't do anything bad to you. It'll just give you access to the device via SSH. Now, what we'll need is a USB storage device as well, but we won't do that quite yet. First, we're going to go into this and see if we can access the device without any problems. So, as you can see, the IP address is here. So, I'm going to go into a terminal window and type ssh root at and then the IP address of the device. And it'll request a password, which is hack5bunny. Is it? Hack5 squirrel. Sorry, this is not the bash bunny. There we go, and we are in the Hack5 Squirrel. So we can type ls, and this is a Linux computer. Who am I? I'm, oh, well, it doesn't have that. It doesn't matter, I know who I am, but this doesn't, and it doesn't matter because we're gonna go into payloads and see what is there. So we'll see there are three switches, which represent our three payloads, and this is where we can drop new ones if we really want to uh, customize this a bit. And we can look online, and there are a whole bunch of different payloads available online to put in here if that is what you want to do. But first, we're going to check out payload one, which is TCP dump. So let's go ahead and do CD switch one, and then we'll ls, and we can see our payload.sh. So Let's take a look at that by typing cat payload.sh and I'll enlarge this a bit so we can see better. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to route traffic while simultaneously dumping all of the traffic it's routing to a TCP dump file. And an important note is that this payload will run only if we have USB storage. So in order for this to work, we first need to do an additional setup step besides just setting it to this option and plugging it in. So I'm going to go ahead and take this USB drive and plug it in and we'll need to format it to the correct format. And one of the acceptable ones is NTFS. So that's what I'm going to use today. So there we go. All right. So we have this generic uh, USB drive that I picked up in the press room of RSA, which is the best place to get flash drives. We're going to erase it and we're going to specify we want it to be Windows NT. So let's go ahead and erase.
Okay, and after what seems like a million years, we now have a Windows NT formatted flash drive. So we'll go ahead and eject this, and I'm going to plug it into the packet squirrel. And the next step is to go back to our diagram here, and we're going to switch our payload selection switch from arming mode, which is all the way to the side of the USB storage, all the way over to payload one, which is on the far other side and where right next to where our USB power is plugged in. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch that now. And we need to re, uh, basically reboot the device. So I'm going to unplug it and plug it back in. And now it should be ready for us to plug in line and start capturing on basically anyone who plugs into this ethernet connections internet activity. And we should be able to see all sorts of interesting stuff depending on what sorts of websites they're visiting and what services they're running. After we capture information using the Hack5 Packet Squirrel, we can go ahead and grab the USB thumb drive off of it and plug it into our computer to examine what we found. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go into the loot folder, open TCP dump, and you can see we have a number of things here. I'm going to pick, so let's go ahead and open up this 34 megabyte file in Wireshark and see exactly what we've managed to retrieve. Okay. So opening this up, the first thing I see immediately is we start getting host names of devices, and we can also see that some of this traffic isn't encrypted. And that's great news because if we want to start learning about what this person was doing or what sorts of websites were accessed, then we have a lot of information waiting for us both in insecure requests or unsecured requests uh, that like HTTP, which don't use any form of transportation layer security, and also DNS requests, which by their nature will be exposed, allowing us to see what people were visiting, if not exactly what they were doing. Now here I'll type in a DNS filter. And this will allow us to see all the different DNS requests that went out. And if we click on any of these, we can then go into the domain name system response, uh, look at the queries, and we can start to see all sorts of both automated and maybe less automated queries that were sent out. So let's go ahead and see if we can identify some interesting websites. So we can see, uh, I saw something from Signal. So I also see a personal website. I can see YouTube. I can see Reddit. I can see a bunch of other information that allows me to know a little bit more about what this person is doing. So again, we can see both background applications like Adobe Creative Cloud, and also things that might be a little bit more easy to understand, like just browsing Reddit or looking at uh, looking at videos on YouTube. We also see that there is, I think, dig uh, dig.com and a couple other things here that might allow us to infer what was happening, even if we can't see the contents of these websites. Now, if we wanna get into what the actual content of the website, we can start looking for HTTP requests. And that's gonna be a slightly different filter here, just HTTP. Now, here, if I scroll down all the way, I can see the source and the destination, and we can also start to follow these and see a little bit more about the exchange and maybe learn something about what was said. So if I right mouse click on this, then I can click on follow and then HTTP stream, and this will go ahead and track exactly what happened and usually show both sides of the conversation. In this case, it looks like there's only one side of the conversation, but we can close out of this. And let's try tracking this one. Oops, no, no, we wanna do HTTP. All right, let's say this one, follow HTTP stream. Okay, so we have a, uh, a series of HTTP interactions. We can see a little bit about the information that was, that was exchanged, the user agent, all this is useful information that tells us more about the person who is requesting it. For example, a micro, a Macintosh, a Intel Mac, we can see the version, we can see the WebKit, we can see the version of Chrome or Safari that was used. All this great and useful information for taking a look at targets that are perhaps using this. So if I go back, I can also do HTTP contains, and then I can pretty much do whatever string I want. So if I wanna just keep it things to vistamiddle.org, I can do this flag, and we should only start to get things that are from this particular interaction. And if I double click, we can then see things that were exchanged, which is 
really useful for if you want to perhaps sniff for passwords if someone's accessing a router or doing anything that might reveal some more personal information. Now here we can see that this is a subdomain of a very insecure middle school website. I'm not gonna look any further, but suffice it to say if someone were submitting passwords or any, any sort of other credentials to this website, we would be able to sniff them and see them here. Now I'm gonna end this for now because we are coming up on getting a little bit more into a Wireshark tutorial, but this is a great way to both grab information from an ethernet connection and then parse it to discern what that person was doing, what kind of software they're running, and even what kind of hardware they're running based on the contents of HTTP requests and DNS requests. While the Hack by Packet Squirrel is an amazing tool for taking advantage of any unattended ethernet connections, there are a couple limitations that you should be aware of. For one, when you plant this, you'll need to come back for the USB flash drive if you want to get the data. So if you only have access once, then this might not be the best tool to use. For another, this also won't be able to capture any traffic sent using a VPN or over SSL. So there will be some things you won't be able to see. However, HTTP requests and DNS requests are all up for grabs. If you want to pick one of these up, you can check out the links in the description and on the Nullbyte article, which is also a great place to go if you get confused and you need to do some troubleshooting. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for upcoming episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.